Hello guys and I am warmly welcome you to this video. My name is Russell Ochidakwa. I'm going to be demonstrating to you guys how to use our three recent components that we've made available to you through our latest version. You may have noticed that we have released yet another update which is 0.6. So let's search for Citicon so that we can see the latest version that we have released is 2.0.6. This version was released on the 10th of June 2021, which is as of this recording today. You may have noticed that previously we had 2.5, which was released a few days ago, but we made other changes as well and updates and released the 2.6. So I encourage you please to go ahead and install this recent and most updated version 2.0.6. We have made available these three components within our library, the Citicon Emo Validation component, the Password Validation, and the Credit Card Validation components. So how do these work? I have split this video into three parts. So the first part, we're going to be demonstrating how to use the email validation. The next part, we're going to be looking at the Password Validation. And the last part, we're going to be looking at the Credit Card Validation component. So if you go to the properties of the first component we're going to be demonstrating, which is the email validation, you notice that we have several properties. I'm going to walk you through all these properties and how you can use these properties. So let's get started here. Let's run the project and see what we have so far. And I'll walk you through how to use the same implementations in your own project. So here is the email validation. When we type an email, it checks for the validity of the email in real time, which means we can check whether the email is valid or not. So let's say Russell at gmail.com. This is a valid email format. And the component tells us that this email component, this email format, sorry, is valid. Let's try to put some invalid characters like an at and tells us that the email cannot have a double at, it must have a single at symbol. Let's try to end with a dot. It tells us that uh, the domain cannot end with a dot symbol. Let's try to add the at at the start of the email. It tells us like this. So this is quite interesting because we can, val we can validate any given email in real time and check for its validity. It's quite interesting that I found one article which talks about the validity of some email types that are allowed. And this validation tool is so complex that there are some given email that are really checked by other validation tools that can be checked with this component. Let's try something here. Let's say Russell. And instead of putting a domain, we're going to put an IP. It tells us that this is valid. If we try to put a wrong format, it will still tell us that this format is invalid. Let's try to change the username to something else like this. Tells us that this is valid. You see, the username must start and end with a double quote. Yes, because we have started with a, with a double quote. If we start with a double quote, we have to end with a double quote. So... I encourage you guys to go ahead and download this um, latest library and install in your development tools. And I want you to try different formats and see the power of this component. Of course, as time goes on, I'm going to, we are going to make some updates and upgrades, improvements. But be assured, this is one of the most uh, complex email validation tool that you may find in a .NET library. It is very useful and since this is the initial release, we hope to add more complexity, more options in the near future. So what do we have under the properties of this beautiful component? Here you can see that we have the error message. And the error message here, it shows the error. This error is shown here on the form. We have a label. Let me put a random text. We have a label here and we have renamed this label to email message. So what happens is that the error message is a string. That message is shown onto that label. We have this property message description. 
this property accepts type control so it looks for a control that is going to display the error message and in this case we have said that the email message label should display our error message that is why when we run the project and when we type something on the onto the email field the error is shown and this happens in real time because the component automatically maps the error onto the given control we have the is valid property this is a boolean property which stores a value indicating whether the given email is valid or not so we're going to handle this in our button click and see what happens here it is i want to show you something guys before we handle anything here let me remove this uh, event that i've created here let me remove this event as well and let me remove this uh, event i'm sure it's it's already gone and let me do this let me build the project and run this is the first thing i was supposed to mention to you guys i'm sorry i forgot but i have to show you this right so as you type you can see that the errors are being shown and the validation is being shown this happens codeless as you can see here we only have a single line of code which gives a big shadow to the form that's all so our validation tool are codeless basic validation you don't have to write a single line of code the component automatically validates the given email by itself this is true and the same with the password validation and the credit card validation it happens in real time automatic validation you don't need to write a single line of code but what if you want to make this more complex yes that's when you can write a few lines of code let me demonstrate this to you so in this case we have the is valid we want to show whether the given email is valid or is not valid we're going to handle this and we're going to say if the im we're going to say the email validation tool is valid property should be converted to a string and then we want to display this in a message box let's see what we have so far let's run the project let's allow visual studio to build save changes and we can see what we have so far right so when we click here it's saying false is email valid it's false i think to give this a meaningful description let's do this is email valid like a question and we are going to wait for a response so let's write and let's wait for visual studio to make some changes and see what we have so far is email valid false okay let's write something russell at gmail.com is email valid true which means yes if you write anything funny is email valid false so we can actually handle this for example we are creating an account we want to ensure that the email is valid we want to clean the given values before we save them to our database we can use this validation too it's quite simple quite easy a single line of code and we're good to go we have also this um, target category which contains the email text box property this property accepts type input which is a silicon text box not any other control but only the silicon text box that is why you can see a list of text boxes have been enumerated here because it accepts only a silicon text box right so this is the property that we use to select 
the text box that is going to hold the email when the user types so that we can make a real-time validation. Again, the email text box is only a property that holds the control of type Citicon text box. When you go to theme, we can make a few changes. For example, if the email is valid, we want to show the email no error color. If it's invalid, we want to show red. So let's change this to any other color and let's try to handle this again in code. Right. Let's let's try this. If if the email Citicon email validation two is valid, we want the error message here that we have here, the email message for color. for color to be equal to the error message. Wait. If the Citicon validation 2 is valid, we want the email message for color to be equal to this to be equal to this email no error. So we type email no error. Else there must be an error. So email error. Let's check for the result. Let's build and run. Let's give Visual Studio a moment to build to make changes and let's see what we have so far. Right, let's see what we have here. Email no error. Else if the email is not valid. Citicon error message. Let's see the label here. For color is white. The email message label for color is white. For color is email validation to email no color. This is of type color. This is of type color. On button click okay did you see the error that we are making right here we are handling this on the button click instead on the text changed event of this text box okay okay no problem let's still run and see what we have I'm sorry guys I did not notice that I was handling this on the uh, button click let's try this Russell Gmail let's just click here you see, the color has been changed. But, uh, of course, we don't have to handle this on the text box. We want this to happen on uh, on text change event. We don't want this to happen on the button click, sorry, but on the text change. So, I made a mistake there. I did not notice that uh, I was handling this on the button click. So, let's create an event here on text changed event. And then, when the text is changed, changed we are going to do this this else if is not necessary we have to remove this here and come here right let's run please forgive me i made a mistake i did not notice that i was handling this on the button click instead on the text change event of the email text box right so let's tap something so as you can see now we can see the color is uh, red because there's an error at gmail.com 
right there's white because it's valid there's red because it's invalid in fact we are saying red because we have provided this red color if you want you can say um, yellow or orange whatever you want according to your design needs so this is what we can do this is how we can use the email validation to component russell at gmail.com right it's valid and if you write anything funny it's invalid so this is how guys we can use the email validation to basic validation no single line of code whatsoever which makes this a very unique component that we have but if you want complex validation as you can see you can write a very few lines of code on text change event you just apply some color that's it <laughs> basically that's it this button click of course we can uh, handle account creation and check if the password is valid by looking at this is valid we are making casting this to string sorry not casting or converting this to string because it's going to show in a text box but otherwise this is a boolean property as you can see right there it's a boolean property so there's no need to cast this to string or to convert this to string when you are saving to database you just have to check to do a regular check you can either use this in a switch or in an if else statement so thank you guys and the next time i'm going to be showing you how to use the password validation too and are going to be using the credit card validation tool. I look forward to the credit card validation tool because we support up to six credit card types. And as time goes on, I'm going to be added, adding more credit cards that can be validated codeless without writing a single line of code. Just how do we do that? I invite you guys to subscribe to this channel and turn on your post notifications so that you won't miss out when I cover these tutorials. Thank you guys. Until next time, cheers.